Empress of Light and Joy Designs. And this is part two of the Tunisian Brioche series. Today I'm going to be presenting week 15 pattern of the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour, where we will be learning how to make this beautiful reversible uh, Tunisian Brioche cowl and Tunisian Brioche fingerless mitt mitts and um, this is a uh, crochet along if you haven't already joined us go ahead and subscribe below this is a crochet along that goes for a whole year where we get free patterns every week and uh, there's monthly giveaways and more so go ahead and subscribe and hit the uh, alert bell and um, also if you if you like getting free videos please give this video a thumbs up and uh, that allows me to keep bringing you these videos so let's get started on how to make these beautiful items so for these patterns we are going to need two skeins of contrasting yarn a light and a and a darker uh, you can use color changing yarns if you use a color changing yarn I suggest having a solid color for the other for the contrast uh, today I'm using big twist value in the colors medium denim which is really more like a gray and blush pink uh, you'll want to have a measuring tape a yarn needle a scissors and a double-ended Tunisian crochet hook. Today I am using the Denise Interchangeables. And as I mentioned in part one, I highly recommend getting one of these sets. Um, if you like making things with Tunisian crochet, it's really, you do yourself a favor by buying the full set. Um, you know, a lot of us own a lot of crochet hooks, and if we added up how much we paid for them, it's probably actually less than the cost of one of these Denise sets. Um, these are very durable. They're very easy to um, take apart, and they have lots of uh, these different connectors, lots of different sizes. You can make shawls and blankets and projects of any size. So definitely check that out. I'll have links to that in the description below and also in the written pattern and on my website. So let's start this project. For both the cowl and the mitts, you're going to work in the same fashion. For the cowl, the measurements are going to be approximately 22 inches around circumference, and it's going to be about eight inches high. We're going to start with a chain of 27 and we're going to work 52 rows. For the mitts, you are going to work 20 chains and you're going to work somewhere between 18 and 20 rows. The mitts are going to be approximately seven to eight inches in circumference, and they're going to be about six inches high. Now you can, you can modify these measurements very easily the starting chain on the on the cowl this is going to be your eight inches so if you want your cowl to be higher then do more chains if you want your cowl to be not as high as eight inches do less chains you can kind of do a chain and measure how long that is and then as far as the circumference of the cowl you can work the full 52 rows for 22 inches, roughly. And if you want it to be bigger, just work more rows. And if you want it to be smaller, work less rows. You can just measure it as you go. The same for the mitts. 
your starting chain is going to be this side of the mitt and if you want it to be shorter so mine's about six inches um, tall if you want yours to be shorter you could work less you could work say uh, 18 chains or 15 chains just measure it we're using worsted weight yarn and a 6.5 millimeter hook all right so let's start that for this project i'm going to be using the type of tunisian brioche where we work in the uh, tunisian simple stitch in the top horizontal bar so it's going to have this kind of look to it and you can you can see that here in the cowl and also in the mitt. So um, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to work 10 stitches uh, to demonstrate how to make this. I'm not going to make the full item because it's not necessary. So if you're making the cowl, you'll start with a chain of 27. And if you're making the mitts, you're going to start with a chain of 20. And I'm just going to start with a chain of, maybe I'll do 12 to start. So just like in the Tunisian brioche um, part one, I'm going to, we're going to work into the back bump of the second chain to start our to start our row two. This is how the Tunisian brioche works. We start our chain, any number, in our color A. In this case I'm using pink. And then we're going to do a forward pass in color A. So we're picking up the loops in the back bump, starting with the second chain. And if you would like a refresher on this where, where I go a little slower, you can refer to part one of this Tunisian brioche series. Okay, so now we have the 12 stitches on our hook, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You should have the same number of loops on your hook as starting chains. So now for row 3, we're going to slide our work down to the opposite end of our hook to the other end, and we're going to turn our work to begin row three. So for row three, we're going to work a reverse pass in our color B. So we make a slip knot and we're going to add it on to the end of our hook. We have our working yarn coming off of both ends and to work a reverse pass we're going to yarn over and pull through one since we already have the the yarn on the hook we'll count that as our yarn over pull through one and now we yarn over and pull through two continually or repeatedly rather all the way to the end until we only have one loop remaining on our hook. So we just yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end. And 
And when we get to the end, I like to close up that loop that, all, that pretty much always gets loosened up. So we just finished row three in color B. Now we're ready to do a forward pass where we pull up loops again in color B, staying with the same color. So we're working this one in the, the top horizontal bar. As I described in the part one, the reverse pass creates a chain inside of these vertical bars. The gray is the chain. And every chain has these V's in the front and these bumps in the back. And these V's have a bottom bar and a top bar. And they are oriented horizontally. So it's called the top. We're going to be working into this top horizontal bar. This loop on our hook is our first stitch. It corresponds with this vertical bar. So the next stitch is going to correspond with this second vertical bar and we work into the, the horizontal bar right before that stitch. So we're going to go into that horizontal bar. We're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. On the forward pass, we are always gaining loops on our hook. So now we're going to go into the next horizontal bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, and the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, all the way to the end. And if you're used to doing Tunisian crochet, sort of regular Tunisian simple stitch, let's say. You're used to your last stitch going into this edge stitch, but since we're working into the, the horizontal bar, we're not going to work into that edge stitch because this horizontal bar right here corresponds with this stitch. If we worked into this edge stitch, we would keep increasing um, our number of stitches and we don't want to do that. We want to keep it the same. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve loops on our hook. We're still in good shape. We just finished this forward pass in color B and now we do the same thing over again where we slide down to the opposite end. We're going to turn our work and we're going to pick up color A to do our reverse pass. So we just take the work slide it down. We're going to turn, turn the work around and now we're going to grab our working yarn of the pink color A and we're going to work a, re a reverse pass and to do that we yarn over and pull through one and then we yarn over pull through two loops yarn over, pull through two loops, repeat that all the way to the end until we're left with just one loop on our hook. And when I get to the end, I like to pull that loop and keep it from getting too uh, loose. Okay, so we just finished row five where we did a reverse pass in color A. And now what we do is we just come back to row two. We, we keep repeating row two through five until we have the length that we want. So, um, in the case of the cowl, you're going to be working a total of 52 rows. Uh, normally, a reverse pass is not considered a row, but in, because, we're, because we're switching sides, I'm just counting them 
as separate rows. So it's going to be a total of 52 rows for the cowl. And if you're making the mitts, it's going to be um, anywhere from 18 to 20 rows. Basically what you're going to do is, is take that piece and you want it to be snug around your hand, around the top of your, the top of your hand. And once it's at that length, then you'll have enough rows. So let's take a look. Let's do a couple more rows and then I'll let you work on your own until we get to the end. Okay, so we're ready to work another row two. I like to make sure that this loop is snug. And then we go right into our, our upper bar and start pulling up loops. So just keep working loops into those upper bars. And at the end of each of your forward pass rows, just count your stitches until you're really um, sure of your technique to make sure that you have the same number of loops on your hook as starting chains that you started with. And every time you do a reverse pass, you're going to slide it down and turn your work. And each time you turn your work, so this time I turned it this way, the next time when I turn it, turn it back the opposite way and then your yarn will never get, um, your yarn will not get tangled. Okay, so we're on a row three to work a reverse pass in color B. Again, it's going to grab that color B, yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end. So just keep working rows two through five until you have the amount of rows that I designated before, and then I'll meet you at the end for showing you how to close them up and how to finish them off. I'm here at the end of a forward pass. And I just wanted to point out to you to make sure that you don't miss this last stitch here. You can see all these vertical bars and this last one can sometimes get a little squished up and you think you're at the end, but make sure you don't miss this one here. So here's that last one. We'll go into that that upper bar, yarn over and pull up that last loop. And now it's time to do a reverse pass. So we'll slide down, turn our work. And again, I'll meet you back here when we have all of the rows completed that you need to do. So when you end your piece, try and end your end uh, with a reverse pass of your color A. And then you'll be set up for doing um, your bind off and connecting row. And if you can't end on a reverse pass of row uh, A, with, in this color, in this case, would be my pink. I started with pink. Um, you can end with a reverse pass of the other color. It's just that we're going to bind off with color A. So actually, why don't I show you that now? So if you, if you, if your last reverse pass was with color A and you have uh, your first color here, so in my case that would be pink, you could bind off just starting with this color here. But since, um, let's, I'm going to pretend that, you know, to make it fit, I needed to end with this row. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and um, pick up this yarn into this loop like this. And then I'm just going to tighten that up. And now I can begin my bind off 
with with the pink so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to fold it in half just want to get this out of the way get that gray out of the way and we're going to be connecting to our starting row as we bind off now if you are binding off for the cowl you're going to do it all in one one pass the entire item if you are binding off for the mitt you're going to leave a space for your thumb to poke through so um, on this one i left one two three four stitches approximately four stitches undone so let's show you how to do that so the first thing i want to do is i want to connect this loop that's on my hook under the first chain from the other side so i'm going to take that loop off my hook and by the way if you're using the denise hooks you can you can take off the end now and I'm going to go under those two chains those two threads of the first chain and I want this yarn the working yarn to be over here to, to the right I'm going to grab that loop and I'm going to pull it under those two threads of that first chain And now that I have that under there, I'm just going to grab the working yarn and I'm going to just kind of tighten up on that so it's nice and snug on my hook. And I want to get this out of the way here. This end here. Okay, so, so for the bind off, what we're going to do is we're going to skip the very first vertical bar um, because this loop on our hook corresponds with that so we don't go into that one we already have that loop done so we're going to go under the next vertical bar and then we're going to go into the next chain so our our loop went under this first chain here and we want to go into the next one which is right here Let's see if I have that right yep and then I'm going to yarn over I'm going to pull a loop through that chain and then through that vertical bar and then I'm just going to slip stitch that loop through the loop that was originally on my hook. So let's do that again. So we're going to go under the next vertical bar. I'm going to go under the next chain. I'm going to yarn over and pull a loop through the chain and the vertical bar. Now I have two loops on my hook. And now I'm going to slip stitch like so under the next vertical bar under the next chain yarn over pull through that loop and then pull that loop through the loop that was on my hook so for your cowl you're going to do that all the way down if you are uh, making your mitts what you're going to do is for about four stitches you're just going to do a regular bind off so that would be you would go into just the vertical bar yarn over pull up a loop and then slip stitch that do the next one slip stitch another one slip stitch and another one slip stitch so now we're going to have the whole 
for our thumb. So we want to make sure that we skip the right amount of chain. So that's one, two, three, four. So the next one we're going to go into is this one. So I'm going to go under this front vertical bar to reconnect. Go into that next chain, yarn over, and then slip stitch. The next vertical bar and the next chain, yarn over, pull through a loop, and slip stitch. Go through the next vertical bar and the next chain, yarn over, pull through a loop, and slip stitch. And now it is all completed. So now the next step is to do a row of single crochet around the top edge and the bottom edge. Okay, so now to do the single crochet edging, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one. And in each of these side stitches we have we have two threads that we're going to go under and I'm also going to work in this tail as I go along too so the first stitch is going to be these two gray threads there's one and two so I'm going to go under under those I'm going to lay that tail down on top so that it gets worked in. I don't have to sew it in later. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. And that's one single crochet completed. So I went into my gray. The next one I'm going to be going into is pink. So you'll notice that there is another gray thread here, but we're not going to be going into that. So we're going to go into the next color, yarn over, pull through a loop. And again, I'm working in the tail as I go. And then yarn over, pull through those two loops. So we just did pink. Now we're going to do these two gray ones. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. And you're just going to do that all the way around. Um, some of the places you'll, it'll be, the, the two side threads will be less obvious, like right here. It's these two here. Go under these two here. Lay that tail down on top. Yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm looking for the gray and that's one and two. Sometimes depending on how tight you were crocheting on your edges, sometimes they're a little um, harder to spot. But as long as you know that you have to alternate between your two colors, you'll be able to pick up speed in no time and you'll be all the way around. So then I'll show you how we do the bottom. Um, and actually, before I, we go to the bottom, I'm going to just show you um, what we do here at the end. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. I'm going to do um, one last one here. And then I'm going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. I'll go into that crochet, just pull up a loop and then slip that stitch through the loop on my hook. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to cut this yarn here. Pull that through the, that chain. And now we'll just turn it over and on the bottom we're still our yarn is still connected. So we're going to use that to do the exact same thing on the bottom, except this time we're going to have it in the other, in the other color. And if, if you want 
to have the same color on both ends you can just attach your yarn uh, but for now I'm just going to uh, pull the loop through two of those threads I'm going to chain one and then working in this tail as well I'm just going to go under the alternating side stitches and single crochet all the way around and I'll join you back for the slip stitch at the end so I just did my last single crochet now I'm just going to go into the very first one yarn over and do a slip stitch I'm going to chain one and I'm going to cut my yarn pull that yarn through pull it tight and our piece is complete you'll just need to sew in these two ends and you can just sew them in along um, the colors and then um, your mitt will be complete or your cowl and it will be also reversible so pretty cool another thing that you can use this brioche pattern for is to make more of these lantern covers so this one is made with the Tunisian simple stitch in the um, top horizontal bar and has the single crochet edging and then this one was made with the full stitch uh, Tunisian brioche stitch and in part one of this uh, series I show you the difference between these two kinds and you can also um, if you want to make your cowl in the Tunisian full stitch or any of the other kind that I show in the um, in part one you can do that you just may need to make more rows uh, to make it fit so that's kind of another neat thing that you can use these for these go over these lanterns if you take a look um, through the magical mystery tour it's one of the first patterns is these lanterns uh, these lantern covers these are LED lanterns and these are nice because they're holiday colored with the red and the green and when it's uh, dark they really show up really pretty so they're good for decoration and they're also very functional if you have a uh, power outage and here's the other one just to show you what that looks like super pretty the red and the green so definitely make a couple of those too and the links to these um, mini lanterns are in the written pattern and on the blog post and I believe also in the description on the YouTube tutorial so this is what your fingerless mitts will look like and this is what your reversible cowl will look like So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with your crafting friends. Please share your pictures of your completed projects uh, with a link in the comments below to um, wherever you have it posted, whether that's uh, Facebook, Instagram, Ravelry, Pinterest, or what have you. And, um, and be sure to subscribe because we have uh, new patterns coming out every week. And if you liked this pattern, take a look in the description below um, because we're going to have a part three, which is where we're going to learn to make this mitt, which is a slightly different version. Uh, the, the striping is going this way and it also comes with a thumb hole. 
And then in part four, we're going to learn how to make this. Let me just zoom out. We're going to learn how to make this reversible hat, also in Tunisian brioche, that's fully reversible. Pretty fun. And it's got a pom-pom on the inside and the outside. So that's a really fun project. That'll be in part four. So thank you again for joining us. Give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, share, and see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>